everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung, and in this video, we're going to take our practice topology 3 that we've set up in a previous video, and we're going to play around with a very interesting command called the backup interface command. So, what this does is the backup interface command will sense when your line has gone down, and then it will bring up another interface to sort of take its place and reroute around the failure. So, this is good for detecting physical layer problems. So if uh, you unplug, somehow the, the link gets unplugged or you power down, you accidentally power down the, the port, well, this should detect it and fix the problem and give you another route around. Uh, so let's see if we can set this up. We've got our practice topology three up and running. We have to do one minor change to it We've got our serial 00 link that goes across, and we have a IP address of 101013x for that. We're going to add some text here, just so it helps us remember. We're going to need to add a what's called a sub-interface, a point-to-point -point sub interface, serial 0 slash 0 point 1. And the IP address for that on the R1 side will be 1010. Oh, let's do 14x, right? So our one side will be 10, 10, 14, 1. And then we're going to do the same thing, just so we can remember it's it's the same text, 10, 10, 14x for R2. So on R2, it would be 10, 10, 14.2. Okay, so let's set this up. We're going to go to R1. Hopefully you have saved your configs from before. I'm going to move this over. All of my interfaces are up. Let me just make sure that's correct. So now I'm just going to have to set up the sub interface. So I'm going to conf t interface serial 00 0.1 and you can see there that's it for that command. So it's a sub interface. It sort of piggybacks on top of the regular interface. I'm going to give an IP address of 10 10 14, 1. And it's a slash 24 mask. And this is already going to be up. And the reason is the regular interface is up. I'm going to go to R2 and set up the corresponding sub interface. So conf t interface 0, 0, 0, dot 0.1. And by the way, you don't have to use dot one. You could use dot whatever. In fact, as I exit out, I could do interface zero 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 dot. And as you do a question mark, you have a lot of choices for there. But well, dot one is usually okay. Some people like putting the dot to correspond with the IP address. Uh, that's certainly up to you. Or some people like to do it for the frame relay, the DLC number. That's cool too. That always works but uh, just whatever is easiest for you to remember. So IP address of 10.10.14.2. All right, so we'll exit out of there, show IP it BR. So you can see here that we've got our fast ethernet, our regular serial interface, and our sub interface. Well, let's see if we can ping R1's side. So ping ping, or uh, ping 10.10.14.1. And we have a success. In fact, we should be able to ping the other side of pretty much everything. Uh, fast Ethernet. That works. The regular serial interface. And that works also. So just, just as we thought it would. Of course, the loopbacks we won't be able to ping. Oh, okay. Well, looks like... Oh, that's our loopback. Sorry about that. Thought it was on R1. So if I ping the loopback of R1, that's not going to ping it. And that's as expected because we do not have a routing protocol set up. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to have our main link. Let's say our main link is uh, the serial line. And we want to say if that sub interface dies, so if that 000.1 interface dies for some reason, we want to switch over to the fast Ethernet. Now, right now, both interfaces are up. Both the 000 and the fast 00 are up 
and uh, basically depending on which way the routing protocols say or which way your static routes say it could be using either line but what we want to do is say okay zero zero is it if it dies switch over to fast zero zero a couple things we want to do before we enable this we want to enable a routing protocol to throw all of our interfaces into a routing protocol so we go to r1 and I guess we could do, uh, let's see, a popular one would be router OSPF. And let's just do the Hail Mary network statement and throw it into area zero. We're going to go over to R2, start OSPF there. We have a neighbor formed, show IP route, and now we should be able to ping pretty much everywhere. Cool. So that, that's sort of the whole purpose of setting up OSPF is we have full connectivity and it's also going to help us when we have the loop go down. Okay, now we're going to go over to R1. We have to go into the the interface that we want to track so that is interface serial 00.1 which is our main interface this is, the, this is the one we want to have up but if it dies we want to have the other one take over okay so I'm gonna do the command backup interface do a question mark and here we could set up what interface we want to have it to back up to and so backup interface fast zero zero. Notice here that after you type this in, the fast the backup interface, which is fast Ethernet zero zero, will go down. It actually changes to standby mode right there, and the line protocol will go down. Let's exit out of there. Let's just do a show IP int br. And you can see here, fast Ethernet 00 is administratively down, and it's down right there. It's pretty cool. Or actually, this it's actually this one. Fast Ethernet 00 still has an IP address. It's in standby mode, and protocol is down. Okay. So now the question is, do we need to set up the backup interface on the other side? No, you don't necessarily want to do that. Uh, because what's going to happen is if you have both sides of the fast Ethernet down, uh, then nothing's going to come up. And we're going to verify that in a couple minutes. But for now, we've got the backup interface set on one side from R1's perspective. Let's see what happens if we now shut down the serial interface. So conf T, interface 000, zero, zero shut. And you can see here, the serial interface is down. And lo and behold, about one second later, the line protocol on our fast ethernet is up, which is pretty cool. Loading to full, and our neighbor relationship is up. Let's just do a show IP in BR. And you can see the fast ethernet 00 is up and up, which is pretty nice. You could also do a show backup that's going to show your backup interfaces. So you can see here your primary interface, your secondary interface, and it's in backup mode right now. Let's see if we can ping 2.2.2.2, which is the loopback of R2. We have good connectivity, so it is flowing over the fast Ethernet line. Let's just do a quick IP int BR. Uh, show IP route. All right, so we've got our O route to 2222 via 10.10.12.2, which is our fast Ethernet link. So everything looks good. Now let's no shut our, fa our uh, serial interface, int 00, zero no shut. You can see our serial line changes to up and our fast Ethernet changes to standby mode and then goes down. And then our OSPF comes back up, which is pretty nice. Show IP int BR. 
You can see our fast ethernet is back in the standby mode. Show backup. And you can see here, normal operation 000.1. That means the secondary or backup interface is down, the regular interface is up. Let's do a show IP route. And you can see now that my O route that goes to loopback of router 2, 2.2.2.2 is now going through 10.10.13.2, which is the serial link on router 1. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so now let's take it one step further. Let's see what happens if I do the backup interface on both sides. So let's conf T there. So I already have it set on router one, and I can verify that by doing a show run. Show run, and we have this section right here, interface 000.1, backup interface fast ethernet 00. Now let's head over to R2. T interface 000.1 backup interface fast ethernet 00. As expected the fast ethernet is going to go into standby mode and the state is going to change to down. My serial line is still up so I'm going to ping the loop back of R1 everything's good let's do a show route or show IP route and you can see my O route is going to 10 10 13 1 which is my serial line my serial link and now let's see what happens if I shut down the serial interface interface 0 0 0 shut okay as expected the OSPF neighbor goes down Fast Ethernet changes to up. So from R2's perspective, everything looks somewhat okay. However, when you ping, it's not going to work. And the reason for that is if we go over to R1, you can see that absolutely nothing has happened on R1. There you go. And until, about right now, if we do a show IP in PR, now our fast Ethernet 00 has come up. It took us a lot longer than before. And the reason is it has to detect the problem from the other side. Now, if from R1, I ping 2.2.2.2, I have a success. If I show IP route, You can see my O route of all twos is now going through 10, 10, 12, 2, which is my fast Ethernet link. So you can see here that when you set up the backup interface on one side, it works fine. It works very quickly. If you set up the backup interface on both sides, it takes a little bit longer to respond. So you might not, that might not be acceptable because it's looking for a physical link failure from your side's perspective. So R2, when you, when you down that serial link, that fast Ethernet link is going to come up right away. But from R1's perspective, it still it might still think it's up, and it's going to take a long time to come up. Also, another complication is if you have a switch in the middle, this will not work because it's looking for a physical a link failure. And if you have a switch in the middle or a hub in the middle, it's going to think everything's fine and dandy, and it's not going to... It's not going to switch over. And we'll actually do that in another video just to prove the point. Well, as far as this video is concerned, thank you for watching. This was a quick and easy video on how to set up a backup interface.